Radio Labyrinth presents. We have guests this week. We're going to be talking about a couple of different things. Uh, KusaCon is an event that we went to last year. It was our first visit out there, in it's in Rome, Georgia. And we had a great time. We we saw our good buddy Brian Silverbacks out there, and Ming Chen was out there. A whole bunch of people. Uh, and, of course, uh, Carrie Means from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And I wanted to let everybody know that it is coming back this year. It is November 5th, which is a Saturday, also again in Rome, Georgia. Uh, for details and information, you can go to kusacon.com slash guests, find out who's been there before, and maybe sometime soon um, who will be there this fall. So, again, it's uh, Kusacon, Saturday, November 5th, 2022. That's this year, the day after my 52nd birthday and uh again in rome georgia but today on the show we're going to talk a little bit about that but also a really cool event that's taking place in rome georgia and i'm going to turn it over to jeff to do the introductions eli uh is going to uh talk about kuskan and then we have lynn green who um was just telling us she's uh the president of p flag in rome and Justin Deal is a board member also of PFLAG in Rome. They're going to talk to us about Rome Pride Fest, which starts in June. It starts on the 24th. Awesome. Well, it's nice to meet you. I know a couple of you have your mics mu uh, muted right now, but it is is really nice to meet you. And uh, I look forward to hearing about everything that's going on. So, Eli, tell, tell everybody a little about what, what Kuskan is and what you do there. I was recruited by George to do photography for the convention. So I was gonna be the official photographer. And um, as the convention got closer, he messaged me. He's like, hey, I, I know you've been to different shows. I had a few questions. If you can help me out, I would appreciate it. So I said, sure, no problem, George. I'm here, you know, whatever you need. Um, so answering a few questions turned to be like, hey, I need you on board with me. I need you to like be my right hand for the show. I was like, great, absolutely. Do you see what I'm going to do photography? Because I cannot do both. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was more focused on helping George out. I also was uh, helping the cosplay contest. I was the one who basically put it together, uh, got the judges ready. We did the judging. We did the deliver it the winners and things like that so um george was like we're not gonna talk to kusacon 2022 until later in the week or later in the year when when we got up when we got up on sunday morning he said okay so for our next show <laughs> i was like great all right i'm here for it <laughs> so that's when he actually offered me the position of con chair he said you know you if i, I would have done it without you and I want you on board 100%. And I was like, I'm here for it. How many have there been now? Was this is, is going to be the second one this second year. Second one. Awesome. Now, how, do you, how did you get uh, interest and create an event to, that is so far away from Atlanta, but yet close enough where people from the city will go? You know what I mean? Because like... It's like, I guess, to me, I don't really know maps very well. So is it yeah. like halfway between uh, Chattanooga and Atlanta, maybe, distance-wise? I, I think it is. It's like in between Atlanta and Chattanooga. Yeah. Um, what, what I liked about Rome was that there was so many younger, the younger crowd loved it. Yes. And also seeing the parents bringing their kids interested in cosplay, that really warmed my heart. And... That, you know, later on, after after the first event, I told George, this is what Rome needed. Rome, it's a little bitty town. I live in a little bitty town myself. Mm -hmm. So bringing an event at that capacity, even though that it's not as big as MomoCon or DragonCon, it's just big enough for the, for the community to enjoy. And Rome you know is a I mean? pretty, pretty little town as well. It I mean, is. it's, it uh, you know, up there you know, where it is, but it has a nice downtown and it's accessible and, you know, for, okay. I didn't know it was the first one. It mm -hmm. certainly looked successful because it seems yes. packed and everybody was having fun. So congratulations on that. And I Thank guess you. that's why you're having a second one. Right. Absolutely. Well, just like I told George, because 
nobody can go to Atlanta for a convention. Nobody can go up to Chattanooga for a convention. So we're bringing that to Rome. Yeah. To bring an event to a small town that's never been done before. It's a little risky. The first year, now the second year, we're expecting probably double the size. Well, yeah, you've got you've got all that history from last year, all the marketing, all the the you know the, the news coverage you guys had, and then the great turnout. Absolutely. So I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's bound to be at least as big, if not bigger, this mm -hmm. next year. So that's great. Yeah, Absolutely. the word word of mouth, I imagine, will be pretty big from everybody that went last year. Right. Oh, and we we get told a lot, and when we set up a convention, you know, we set up our fan table, or like they see me running around, they say, "Hey, were you at Kusikon?" Man, we had a great time. You know, glad Rome has something that we can go to and we don't have to drive two to three hours to Atlanta and then back. You know, it's right here in our backyard, you know. Right. And it's not difficult to get there either if you're living in the Atlanta area. Yeah. It didn't take long. The roads weren't bad. And uh, when you get out there, there's all sorts of things to do. So, you know, I would, I would make a day of it. You know, take your family, go up there check out the cosplay, check out all the artists, the booths, everything, and uh, see what's around you, especially that time of year, it's, it's not going to be super hot. So you can, you know, plan a whole day around it, or maybe even a weekend because you know, right. Saturday and Sunday. Well, not even that. I mean, I have traveled eight hours to a convention myself. Yeah, absolutely. So to bring that into a community that doesn't have anything, it's like an oasis, you know, yeah. it's like, Hey, this is new check it out so it was to me george kept saying yeah i don't think we did great i said george we did fantastic yeah like it was a great turnout you didn't saw it the way i saw it i was signing people up for the cosmetic contest i think we had over 100 people signing up for the cosmetic contest yeah the, co the cosplay seemed like huge yeah huge, yeah huge and plus, you got a lot of Q and A with uh, Carrie Means right before yes. the the contest. You got to find out some, you know, exclusive information that he maybe you shouldn't have said, but right. that's okay. <laughs> About the yeah. Hunter Force, uh, that's Carrie Means, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's a big event coming up in Rome. This takes place in June, so. Let's find out more about it. Rome Pride 2022. Is this also the first time? Uh, this is taking place in Rome, or is this an annual event? This is technically what we're calling the inaugural year for Rome Pride. But before, we have had three years where we've done small events. And then as the years go by, you know, obviously we had the pandemic. But besides that, the interest and the engagement just keeps growing year after year. So this year, we decided to just go all out. Mm -hmm. um, and June the 24th through the 26th, we'll be having the first, what we're calling the inaugural Rome Pride 2022. It's going to be really exciting. So for people who don't know, what is PFLAG? What does it stand for? And, and what is their, their overall aim? So uh, PFLAG is a national organization, and it um, provides advocacy and education and support for the LGBTQ community, along with their friends and family um, and allies. Eli just said that, you know, Kusakan was kind of an oasis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that st stuck out to me because I have called Northwest Georgia the LGBTQ support desert. <laughs> um, we have zero support around us um, for both the LGBTQ community and their friends and family. And I didn't realize that until my own child came out to me mm -hmm. and I needed help. And the closest help I could find was Johns Creek or Woodstock or Sandy Springs. Um, there was nothing between Chattanooga and Atlanta and Birmingham. And now there's one that's like a, the nexus for all three. Yes. Then, so yeah. I attended Johns Creek and Sandy Springs virtually thanks mm -hmm. to the pandemic um, for about a year and a half and then decided it was time to start one in Rome. So I started um, the PFLAG group. We actually started talking about it last March in 2021. And by August, we were approved. We had gone through the whole 501c3 process. Um, and now we're up and running with monthly support groups. Um, in June, we're also going to be starting our teen uh, support and social groups. Um, and the 
outpouring from our community has been absolutely more than I think any of us expected. That's great. Do you have a website you can direct everyone to if they're interested? Yes, our website is pflagromega.org. I'm looking right now. Um, it looks like the, uh, the is it a full weekend or just or tell, tell us about what's going on? It seems like there's a ton of fun things going on. Yes. So um, Rome Pride, um, Ro PFLAG Rome is hosting Rome Pride. Okay. And so we have a, um, a board of about eight of us that have been working only since January to make this a reality. And <laughs> um, it really started as just a small event and has now morphed into three days of uh, fun and events. Um, and so Justin, I'll let you talk a little bit about um, what we have planned for those three days. Yes, for sure. So just like any good pride, we will have a march. And uh, so that will be on Saturday, June the 25th. But uh, starting on June the 24th, we are going to honor our sponsors for a little reception. And then after that is what we're calling the Club Vogue Pride Kickoff Party. Uh, it starts at 7 p.m. at the Vogue in downtown Rome. And what is the Vogue? And we'll the Vogue is an event space. Okay. Um, and it, the, the name just kind of happens to be perfect for a Pride <laughs> event. <laughs> and, and so we're going to have um, late night comedy and drag. Uh, happening and then Saturday is what has kind of morphed into this almost a festival really um, so we at Bridgepoint Plaza and Heritage Park they're connected by a bridge in Rome that goes over one of our three rivers and uh, so we're going to have over 30 vendors we're going to have food trucks we're going to have a kids area with a kids DJ um, we also have the Pride Plaza main stage where we have drag performers from Atlanta and Rome, um, including someone from RuPaul's Drag Race is going to be there this year. Um, and then we're doing a riverboat cruise for people that want to go out. It's going to have champagne and charcuterie. Um, and so it's going to be really special. And then we have another show that night. And we know that the faith that faith is really important to a lot of people in rural Georgia, right? Um, and so we actually have worked with a few churches and they're gonna be doing a non-denominational pride related service with a special guest on Sunday the 26th. I think that's awesome, especially all the stuff for kids to do. Because, you know, we grow up in, in a mid-sized or a small town like that, Jeff and I did, we grew up in Pennsylvania and you rely on that every year that, that that festival and that gets everybody in the community out and you see kids from towns that you know, and then you have a funnel cake and maybe go on rides, but it's just, a, it's fun for community to get together and, uh, and you just build memories from that. So I think that's incredible. The first word I like to use is community. It's all about the community for us. Um, and obviously inclusion and diversity as well, but community is really important to us and to a lot of people in Rome. So. How amazing is it that we live in a time where something like this event could happen in a small town in Georgia, right? Or anywhere in the country for that matter. But I think it's incredible. Yes, I, I grew up in Chatsworth, Georgia, which is even smaller than Rome. As an LGBTQ person, it, it was difficult and uh, I didn't have support and got to a point when I got older where I was like, I'm going to create the support if I can't find it. So that's what Lynn and I decided to get together with the board and 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 let people and open it up you know and let's just have the conversations and discussions and and make make rome um accessible for everyone yeah and have the town and the businesses in the town be supportive as well that i think definitely shows progress yeah rome was a cool little town i didn't, didn't yeah, get to see a lot of it after I, I went to the after party after kuskan which was right downtown so i got to see a little bit of it but it was very quaint and i thought it was a lovely town like the downtown was very nice it is we do have a, a nice downtown and really that's where the majority of our events are centered for rome pride we really you know kind of went at it of course i come with the family perspective because i'm the mom of the group um when we meet but i really wanted the event to be family friendly um on our main stage during the day on saturday we are having drag performers 
but they're doing day appropriate drag. Um, <laughs> we are also having drag queen story time um, where they can sit and read to the little kids. And um, just so that, you know, people in our little town can see people that don't necessarily look like us um, and, you know, just be exposed to that. Um, we're hearing more and more that, like, I know I'm not the only parent of an LGBTQ teenager in Rome, Georgia, but you would almost think so because I don't know any other parents or didn't until I started PFLAG mm -hmm. um, because it's just something that's not talked about here. And the same for, um, I have met people in our community who said, my kids are getting picked on at school because they have two dads. And at Pride, I'm going to take them and walk around so that they can see that there are more people and more families that look like us. That's cool. Well, it's a shame that that exists still. I suppose it will until everybody, you know, goes away. <laughs> I, I just am trying to put it nicely. Generational you know, change. Yeah. yeah, generational change takes a generation. So, I mean, you know, the Gen Xers maybe, and then certainly uh, the, the generations after Gen X, you know, you just see people, like, you know what, that's just a person. It's just a person. And I like this person for who this person is. I don't care. You know, I'm not going to hate somebody because they're different from me. And, I, you know, we we got a lot of that when we were in school. There were a lot of TV shows and stuff to help us understand that. And I think that it just gets more supportive as you go forward. So I think RuPaul's Drag Race has done a lot for getting drag accepted. Yeah. And plus, it's entertaining. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being entertained. You don't have to be part of the LGBTQ community at all. I mean, even oh. if, you know, to just to enjoy it for the, the quality program that it is, it's a fun show to watch. We also have our own little um, drag troupe here in Rome. Um, they're called the Sizzling Sisters of Rome. And <laughs> they put on a drag show uh, once a month at a restaurant here in town. Um, and they pack that place out. And if you would have told me a year ago that that was happening downtown Rome, yeah. I, I never would have believed it. Um, and I, I wouldn't believe it if you told me about it. I, I mean, I've seen it and it's amazing. Um, <laughs> they are incredibly talented. They are incredibly generous, um, you know, raising money for some nonprofits around town, including PFLAG. Mm -hmm. um, just great people and also a lot of fun. And it just brings that little bit of culture that has not been seen in Rome before. Now, if people want to find out about the Pride Fest, do they go to the PFLAG website or is there a separate website for Pride Fest? Kind of. Uh, so we we're about to release our new website. And um, I think by the time this podcast is released, we'll probably have it up, but it, it'll be romegapride.com. Uh, but the best place to find out right now about events would be the Facebook page. So I would say facebook.com slash Rome Pride. Um, that's the best place right now. All right. Okay, and I see on I see on the PFLAG uh, RomeGeorgia.org site that there is an option for you to sign up to volunteer or, you know, or be a vendor or donate. I see those links are available. And plus you can find out the sponsorship levels and, and more about the events, they're all there. And of course, there are links to the Facebook and the Instagram. And we're also on Twitter and TikTok as well. TikTok. TikTok is a fun app. <laughs> so you can do so little and say so much. I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm so old that I'm afraid of TikTok. Like, oh, there's young people. I'm an Instagrammer. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's me. I can't figure it out. There's too many buttons and whistles and things. <laughs> I feel like my grandma. Why is the VCR 12? <laughs> I want to go on the riverboat cruise. I didn't know Rome had three rivers meeting it. And how big is the, what, what river is it? The Chattanooga? There is the Etowah, mm -hmm. the okay. Ustinala, and in another great river. And they all um, <laughs> meet right downtown Rome. So, so what is the river? It's like an actual riverboat, like, uh, like a steam powered one. It is. It's a, a riverboat and it holds about 40 people um, and they take it out um, right now on special festival weekends. Mm -hmm. um, and 
uh, give rides out in the community. Um, and so we have rented it um, for about a 90 minute cruise up and down the river, along with, I think Justin said, some charcuterie, some dessert, some champagne, um, and some entertainment. We've got a really great singer named Bean out of Chattanooga mm -hmm. um, that is going to be crooning on the ship. Wow. Nice. Well, have we left anything out? Is there anything we haven't covered? Because if we have, we, we need to do it because I'm going to encourage people to go. I think it looks like fun. Yes, we hope everybody comes out. We are, uh, you know, really, really hoping for a good turnout. Um, and we, we do. We have something for everyone um, and a lot of great businesses on Broad Street right downtown that will be open for shopping and dining and, and um, just, you know, a lot of great things to do in the area. What a great event. It, great for the community, great for Rome, great for the vendors, great for the kids and the parents. And Eli, do you know, is KuzCon going to have a table? Yes, we are. Uh, George, the first one is going to be the one going to that one. Right. Um, I will be at another convention here in Birmingham that weekend. So, uh, Sadly, because, you know, being an LGBT member myself, I would have wished that I would be there representing Kusakon. However, I wear many hats, you know, <laughs> so it's it's kind of hard to be right. Right. It's kind of hard to be at different places, you know, all at once. So, well, you rock the hat well, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, but no, you know, having something like that in Rome kind of like along with with Kusakon, it's so good because the cosmic community one thing that i've learned we're very accepting mm -hmm. we are no matter who you are no matter what background you come from no matter who you are you, you're going to be accepted no matter what me and george were talking about it the other day and i told him george think about it this way not our convention is not only uh you know good for the community but it's also good for you know kids now they found in who they are nothing warms my heart seeing parents supporting their kids i unfortunately did not have that support for my parents um i grew out of it you know we all do what can we do about it but seeing parents bringing kids in cosplay you know it's just amazing to me and seeing what leanne does and Justin do, I mean, you guys have my heart, you know, because you guys are God in the future. You know, if I came out 13 years ago, I'm 36 years old right now. I sort of walked the path, you know, not kids now, they, I'm not saying they have it easy, but it's easier for them now because a lot of people are more accepting. Mm -hmm. Back then when I, when I came out, it was very hard. Um, I went right into a relationship and we were together for 12 years. Um, we were the very first couple that got married in Jefferson County here in Birmingham, legally. Wow. So we made history. Uh -huh. We were all over the, the, the news, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, when I, when I showed up for work the next day, everybody knew that I was gay. <laughs> 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 you know, there was no hiding now, not that I was. Yeah. But, um, but now that I'm working along with a convention that also supports LGBTQIA plus and supports these kids, it just it it's, it hits home for me, you know. Yeah, and and for a whole generation of kids that don't have to go through those weird years where you're afraid of being who you are or where people are going to attack you. I mean, there's always going to be jerks, but at least now. You have more supportive people. The ratio is much higher to support the jerk ratio. If that makes uh, sense. <laughs> yeah, and, and at Kusakon, we have zero tolerance for bullying. Yeah, sure. We have zero tolerance for picking on someone because they're different. You know, so Kusakon, it's literally like I just said a while ago, it's an oasis mm -hmm. that everybody is welcome. Well, thank you guys for uh, letting us know about it. And I hope that we can get some people from Atlanta and in our podcast. Well, we're all over the world, but you know what I mean? We hope we can get some people to come out there. We'll definitely be out uh, certainly for uh, Kusakon November 5th and encourage everybody just go up and, and check out Rome, check out Rome pride 2022. And again, if you want more information again, what was the Facebook page? Yeah. So pflagromega.org or the Facebook page for the pride. 
mm-hmm. event. It will be a uh, backslash or forward slash Rome pride. Awesome. Yeah. It was really nice meeting you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank course, you. Absolutely. Hope we get to meet and come up. I'm going to try to get, uh, well, my son will be 18 months and we'll come up. Okay. And we'll be at Kusakon in November too. So if we awesome. don't see you in July, we'll see or in June, we'll see you in November. 